Well, the reef's sticking right out the water now. You can see in the, in the far distance there, that's what we sailed over. We just made it as well. Sticking out, runs across, closes the bay off. There's a little bit of reef sticking out here, next to the island over there. While our clothes are drying out on the raft, we'll just take a walk to the island, to dry land, see what we can find on the way. Relief and extreme gratitude washed over us as we realized that we had faced and conquered our first challenge. The storm appeared almost to be a reminder that despite all our preparations, the gods were ultimately in control. It was not just the weather, but also the extreme changes in tide that were to influence our journey. We had to always be aware of what the tide was doing so that there was no chance of running onto the sharp coral of an unseen reef. Waiting for the tide's return, we explored our surroundings. This morning we had too much water, now I've got too little. It's actually so hot now we can't even go for a swim because there's no water around, so we're going to have to keep in the shade. Keep ourselves covered. We've been uh, watching this cloud for about the last 15 minutes and it's been building up, getting bigger and bigger. There's a bit of a front that is coming along with it. So we think we might just uh, change position. At last, casting anchor, we slept nervously that night on board the Chenderwasi. Put the solar panel out, charging the batteries for the camcorder. Friends at the front at the moment just putting the rubbers on the spear guns. After spending some time on a nearby reef, we were greeted by a passing Papuan fisherman. Yeah. Uh -huh. Berapa jam? Tidak sampai jam. Sampai? Okay, not too far. Iya, dekat. Tidak bawa rokok, kah? Rokok? Iya. Rokok. I'm giving our visitors some ciggies. Terima kasih. Selamat. Sailing on towards our first village was a welcome relief. Got a nice steady breeze blowing. Makes it easy to maneuver. As opposed to the storm weather we had the other day. Later, knowing that there was a village just a few kilometers away, we set out to spear some more fish to present as gifts to the villagers when we arrived. We could hear the excited shouts of the children from the village as our sails were spotted and prahus were launched from the beach to meet us. We've just asked if we could come in um, and join their village. These boats have just come out to join us now out at sea. They seem very friendly and they're uh, they're guarding guarding us in in through uh, the right channels here because it's extremely shallow. Selamat sore. Yeah, there's a lot of activity on the beach. There's a lot of shouting and screaming before we came in. And now, uh, now it's here. 
Setting foot on the beach was an entry into a large family of close-knit people whose warmth immediately made us feel welcome. Yeah. Okay. After arriving here yesterday evening and uh, over much discussion of food and bananas and giving of presents, pens and uh, cigarettes, um, we were welcomed into the village. While we're sitting at the fireplace, we were asked to um, to follow this this man into his home to go and eat. So we went with him, and uh, it was about a two-minute walk or so into the back of the village. And there was a table set out in this room um, with a tablecloth and chair, just for Jay and I, just for the two of us. Um, so there was a, a group of people, about ten of them, who followed us and they carried a light for us to, to show us where we were supposed to go and eat. And uh, we went in there and we sat down. We sat on the table and, well, sat on the chairs at the table and about 10 of them all sat on the floor in front of us, watching us. The food was phenomenal. The rice was cooked in, in uh, coconut milk. You could never try and recreate or, that flavor and taste anywhere else. The villagers showed us their various crops of bananas, kaspi, kaladi, and cocoa plants. This is the kaladi that they eat. Yeah. Grows <laughs> out the ground like that. So they eat the root part at the bottom, cut the skin off and then put it in the fire. This is inside one of these huts. Yeah. It's a bit bright. While some went fishing, those remaining tended crops or went hunting for pig or buck. By the time we had explored the village, the increasing heat forced Jay and I back into the sea to do some more cooling off and hunting. Nice one! I'm going to take it in for the locals, eh? The sun set behind the mountains, and the fishermen returned with their daily catch. Jay and I found ourselves quietly absorbing the evening air and the mystical scene that lay before us. While attempting to explain the reason for our journey to the interested locals, we found the inhibitions of the first world to be fading slowly from our minds. About six, seven, six, seven, yeah. six, seven k's away from Isarin. Travelling down along the side of Rampabon. 
got some wind, dies off and then comes back. After sailing for a few kilometres, a strong gust of wind caused the rope of the sail to jam the pulleys, forcing us to anchor to repair the damage. And we can't get the sails either up or down. And now we're stuck here. <laughs> We've been struggling for the last 10 minutes trying to get it off. Soon, a whole community of children from a nearby village, running along the edge of the jungle, and some in prahus, had gathered to greet us. The other one jammed. Yeah. It's not the one that's, that we pull on. No. Later, some elders arrived and invited us to their village. Thanking them, we declined, explaining that we had to cover a minimum distance every day for us to travel the distance we had planned. It became a regular occurrence throughout our journey. Curious locals would join us to chat, trade, smoke, and extend their ever-present hospitality.